Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another video in my Inspired Saturdays collaboration series. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, let me tell you a little bit about it before I get started. I like to stop by most Saturdays and team up with another crafty YouTuber where we each create a video with a new project that was based in some way on something the other creator made. This could be something that they created a video on here on YouTube, it could be a picture from the Instagram account, or it could be a combination of both. Now if you're a crafty YouTuber and this sounds like something that you would like to join me for, make sure to check out the video linked in the description box below where I give you details on how you can apply. Now please keep in mind it was from last year so I might bring up the year 2020 but the application will have the correct dates when you click on it. I check that every week or so and then I start scheduling those new collaborations. I hope that you'll consider it. Today, I'll be teaming up with Kendra of Cards by Kendra here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Originally, I found an Instagram post that I thought was so neat and I wanted to definitely take inspiration from that. And then I came to her YouTube channel and she also has a video where she shows you how she made it. So both the Instagram picture and that YouTube video will be linked in the description box below. Make sure to check those out when you have time. After you see what I make today inspired by Kendra, make sure to go see her video. It is linked at the very top of the description box below. Today, I'll be creating cards inspired by the project you see on screen. What really caught my eye was that sparkly rainbow. And since recently I bought myself some new rainbow dies, I thought let's bust them out and put those to use. Now my card today won't be as sparkly as Kendra's, although I did consider that because I love some bling and glitter, but I recently bought this Rustic Meadows paper pad from Joanne, and I wanted to use this and kind of do alternative colored rainbows. It's not gonna be your standard primary colors. Now because I want to make the most of my paper, and this is double-sided, I will be attempting, again I have an idea in my head, I will be attempting to make four cards today on camera. For my stamps, I'm going to use some sentiments from Just Miss You from Simon Says Stamp. Right now I think I'll be using the Sending Happy Thoughts. For my dies, I got out a stitch circle that I had here on hand, and I got out a couple different sets from my favorite things. The first one is the one that I told you about that I wanted to get out and use, and this one is called Happy Rainbows. Also from my favorite things, this was up on my die board so I have no idea how old this is or if it's still for sale, but I got out a couple little clouds. Not sure yet if I'll use these, but I did go ahead and grab them. Let's get crafty! I started today's cards by looking at the B sides or the back sides of the pattern papers to see if they would make a nice rainbow color. Once I found one I liked, I looked at the other side to make sure it had multiple colors and would be nice for a card front. I went through the paper pad until I had four colors picked out for my final rainbows. Because the circle die I picked out was rather large, I think it was three and a half inches wide, I wanted to make sure that the pattern paper covers the front of the cards. So I cut down each of the pattern papers that I chose to four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. 
I chose four papers today because originally I had in my mind I was cutting the smaller rainbow which had four stripes. The larger one I ended up using has five but I honestly didn't see any other pattern paper in that stack besides gray that was on the B side. So I decided to just stick with the four pattern papers that I selected. And now I'm gonna do some die cutting. I chose this size circle because when I die cut the rainbow from the pattern paper, it will cover up the area that I have cut out. This is a great way to make the most use of your pattern paper if the middle of it will be covered. I got out my Scotch Blue removable tape to hold my dies in place while I do the die cutting. This tape is strong enough to hold the dies in place while I run it through the cuddle bug, but it's gentle enough that when I pull it up, it doesn't tear the pattern paper. I will end up using this same piece for all of the die cutting and I actually set it to the side and I can reuse it on another project. I ran the rainbow die through on each of the pattern papers, making sure that I hung on to the four largest stripes in my rainbow. You'll see I punched those out and I just set them off to the side and I kept doing this until I had all four colors cut. Once the rainbows were done, I brought in some scraps of white cardstock and I cut four circles using that stitch die. Now it's time to do some stamping. I brought in my Misty so I can set the stamp up once and stamp it multiple times. And for my sentiment today, I will be using Gina K Designs Moonlit Fog Ink. Another reason that I chose the size circle I did, not only does it fit that largest rainbow stripe, but it was also wide enough for the sentiment I chose. Before I set up my stamp, I do want to make sure of where I place the rainbow later. It won't interfere with the sentiment. So once again, I brought in that little piece of Scotch Blue removable tape to temporarily tack that rainbow stripe down. Once that was in place, I got out the sentiment I was going to use. Once again, it says sending happy thoughts and I placed that below the rainbow. Now I did try to make sure it was straight on the Misty, but because it's a circle, it didn't have to be perfect. I can always arrange it a little straighter later. Once I had that in place, I picked it up with the door of my Misty, inked it up and stamped that onto each of the circles. Because this is a brand new stamp, I did have to stamp the first one a couple times just to get a nice solid image. But I also always forget that my ink I'm using is gray and sometimes I expect it to be a little bit bolder or darker. Because there is a lot of white space at the top of that circle, to add some texture and interest, I brought in my Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder and ran each of those circles through the Cuddlebug using it. If you want to give this a try, the embossed sentiment, make sure that you always stamp your piece first before embossing it. Otherwise, when you go back later, it's not going to get the ink on the debossed parts. It will only do it on the raised. So just a heads up if you want to try it. Once all of the pieces were die cut and embossed, I started putting my rainbows together. I chose one stripe from each of the colors until I had four rainbows all ready to go. For this next part, I brought in my Glad Press and Seal and I cut four pieces that those rainbows would fit on. Now this isn't completely necessary, but I wanted to set up my rainbows ahead of time exactly how I wanted them placed before I added the adhesive and put it on the card. If you're going to try this, you'll want to put the front side down. You'll notice there I had to pull it back up and I just made sure that was nice and flat. Then I arranged the next stripe within that, trying to match up the bottoms, making it straight across as best as I could. 
Doing it this way not only allowed me to line up the rainbow like I wanted it before it goes on to my circle, but I can also just bring out my glue one time for each rainbow, get everything with glue on the back, and then take it to my circle. I just thought for me this was better than trying to put each stripe down individually. Speaking of glue, it's now time to get these put onto my circle. I brought in my art glitter glue, which will give me a little wiggle room when I place it on the dots. And you'll notice there that in the top of my bottle, I had a little beaded charm. I bought this from a fellow YouTuber and it allows me to use my art glitter glue and never lose the pin that goes into the top. If you want to know more information about this, I will link the video below where Debbie gives you all the details on how to order. It is definitely worth its weight in gold. What I did was put a little glue stripe on the back of each of the rainbow stripes, and once that was in place, I brought it over to my circle piece. I made sure at this time to push it down really well, just because it will only stick to the raised areas, I want to make sure that I got good adhesion. I did the same thing for all four rainbows, and then I set those to the side for about 10 minutes to allow them to dry. While those were drying, I brought in some pre-cut and scored card bases, and I got my pattern papers put onto the card fronts. Now make sure that when you go to add the adhesive to these, that you put it on the back side of what you want to show. Ask me how I know. I might have a couple less pieces of pattern paper than I originally wanted because I adhered it so the solid colors were showing the first time. Since I had some perfectly sized pattern paper scraps, I decided to decorate the inside of each card just a little bit. I matched up whatever pattern paper was on the front to the strip I put on the inside. This just adds another little detail. Once the glue had had time to dry, it was time to pull my press and seal from the front of the rainbows. Because the rainbows were attached more solidly to the cardstock than the press and seal was to the rainbows, it just pulls right off. Just like with the scotch blue tape that I use, you could probably reuse these pieces of press and seal if you have a good place to store those. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to start putting the cards together. I do want to pop the circles up off the card just a little bit, so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarters inch width. I place three strips of this on the back of each circle, and before I pull that blue release paper, I do burnish that with my fingers. I think this just helps with pulling that off. Once it was ready, I then place it on the card front, making sure to cover up the die cut opening in the pattern paper. I continued this same process until all four cards were completed, and here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Kendra today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out Kendra's video to see how I inspired her. Once again, that video is linked at the very top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.